Hey, Dan Swede, Hydrochem Systems, uh, August 10th, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, demonstrating for the city of South Bend, Indiana. Typically on the power washer, we're running uh, max pressure flow and everything on this is 3,500 PSI, nine gallon a minute. It's a 31 horse Vanguard. It's one of the more impressive power washers in the country right now. So plenty of horsepower and power for it. Get the Vanguard twin cylinder air-cooled engine. Holds about two, quart, two quarts of oil. Air-cooled engine like this, they run at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So the key on that is um, you want to change your oil frequently. We recommend every 50 hours. Manufacturers kind of like it 100. So, you know, if it's 50 and you have them on schedule, even if they're day too late or something, you still got plenty of time. But if you think about it, you can get from here to Miami and back in less than 50 hours. And if you're under heavy load, probably time to change your oil. So just uh, two quarts, it's easy. You have an oil filter on the, on the side here. We have drain hoses and drain valves. So it's not uh, drain plugs. So it's easy for you to access them, open up the drain valve and drain your oil. Uh, on the pump, we also have a drain valve. Make it easy to service. X mechanic here too, so uh, you change the oil on the pump. Yeah, you they change your oil on the pump. It's recommended every uh, about 300 hours. And what kind of oil is it used? It uses a like a general pump oil, and some will actually approve a synthetic engine oil like 30. Will hydraulic weight. oil use work? Uh, Non-detergent hydraulic oil, 30 weight. Yes. Okay. Does that have an hour meter on it? Yes, it does. There's an hour meter on the front panel here. Okay. So you'll be able to keep tabs of the runtime and hours on the machine. All right. Frame stainless steel constructed. Hot water unit. It's a diesel fired burner. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But typically everything's belt driven. What's nice is we have these uh, like carriage bolt style nuts going uh -huh. through the pump rail. Pump rail just doesn't sit on a flat deck which moves around and hard to kind of align and get everything perfect. This will be straight as an arrow, so it's easy to adjust. You can just loosen the nuts. You got a tensioner bolt here that so you can loosen or tighten in order to get the belts in and out. They're straight on track, so it actually makes it real easy. This is probably the best belt for mechanics to work on. Open plan like that. Triple belts on the pump. Um, once again, the air cooled engine. Then we have, on the other side uh, we how have. How about like oil filter numbers and belt numbers and stuff? Yeah, well, we have the information. I'll make sure you get it out directly right. to your email on that. All right. We also provided a spare cup parts kit, which has uh, flow switches, pressure switch, thermostat control, a lot of the the redundant safety devices, some extra O-rings, spray nozzles, uh, the things you'll need. I'd rather have you using the same thermostat and try to rewire a different show us brand. Where all these components are. Yeah, they're in the bag switch. over there. No, we'll the go over that before we're done. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's the whole point of going through okay. this. We also have the master kill switch here. Uh -huh. uh, basically, pull that out like your transfer switch was on. By having that off, your battery should be good to go. So basically, this also prevents... This kind of prevents the hydro, like somebody, if you're in a, a parking lot, if some kid wants to drop the hydraulic arms onto a car or something, by pulling this, there's no power going to anything. Okay. Um, we have a 3000 watt onboard generator on this. It's 115 volt. It's also driven off the engine. It has a single belt on this side. Um, easiest way to kind of adjust this or do what you got to do with that belt or anything is to pull the battery box off. It gives you a lot of open area frame and room to work with. Same with the tensioner bolt. So real easy to service in that nature. A lot of heat shields. Everything here is all stainless steel heat shield, stainless steel frame, burner housing, uh, panels and all. You get your 12 volt battery here. We put a deep cycle 1000 cold cranking amp battery on here. Uh, we recommend those. Now on the generator part, to go back to that briefly, we actually have electrical plugs up here that are lighted plugs, so they'll be able to tell you if they've got power going to them. One plug is actually going to the vacuum recycling system, and the other plug is going to a transfer pump. So the vacuum system is 110 driven? 110 volt driven. Uh, on that vacuum recycling system is also a 12 volt transfer pump. 
That travel transfer pump is taking the wastewater from uh, the cone-shaped solid separation tank through the filter, then back to the recovery tank. So what we have there is the first phase of the filtration system. We have a secondary filtration system that activates after the, the wastewater tank. That'll go through the oil water separator, the phosphate filter, another five microgram filter in carbon. So we're doing a heavy filtration. If you don't need it, don't use it. So if you're able to just discharge your wastewater into a contained area like a landfill or something or, or into a wash bay, you're able to do the same work but without having to go through all the filters. So it really is an evaluation. This also for mobile, if you're going house to house to, to go do a wheel, clean the car, um, replace a lid, like the service truck, you can also clean them while you're there. That's where the, the recycling is it's more beneficial because you're, you're on restricted amount of water. I mean, you can always tap into a fire hydrant and fill your tank back up and do what you gotta do. But uh, typically that, we'll review the whole filtration system shortly. Just letting you know it's powered off of the generator and the 12 volt battery on one of the transfer pumps. Okay. Generator always on or is it switch? switch when the on? engine's running, the generator is powered because you need it for the burner. Okay. This is also a 115 volt burner system, uh, diesel fired burner. Uh, if you end up using winterized fuel, don't use it in the gas or in the engine or the diesel burner come spring when it gets hot. You can wow. get it throws off the uh, the burner fuel, throws off the engine operations, especially like yesterday I was up in uh, the living trailer in uh, Chicago area, a little south, south of there, and it was like 90 degrees, hot, hot. So if we would have had winterized gas, we would have problems with vapor lock. Right. So just in general, if you do buy your diesel in storage for something like this, like we did, Make sure it's before like November or something because they do automatically ship out winterized diesel. Try to keep the winterized diesel out. It really does not benefit this particular unit. So typically on the whole system, this is your suction line which is coming from the supply tank, the fresh water tank. We also have a, a T fitting in there. So if you need to winterize it, like it's already got winterizing solution, that's why your water tank is pink. It's uh, RV winterizing solution, 50 below zero. So when you fill this tank up with RV fluid or winterizing solution, it takes about a minute to winterize the unit. So all it takes is a matter of switching it over. When the winterizing solution's in there, it'll suck right up to the pump here, through the pump, pump head, up and in, into the heating coil the heating coil and then you got to make sure you actually run both heads so have a couple trash carts up there and make sure each head has been winterized before storage uh, even if it's in a heated garage if, if you're going to pack it for away for a couple months because of a tornado uh, power failure or some other issue we just want to make sure that's buttoned up on there you can also blow air through there the suction line the inlet hose reel the high pressure reel and the other reel if you just don't want all that extra RV fluid in there, just blow out those lines. But typically we want to make sure you got a good full winterization on the machine. Prevent any kind of freezing. Interesting fact, the heating coil in this is Schedule 80, ro robotic welded. It's 40% higher strength than the most power washer in the industry. If you were to have frozen ice in that coil, it could split the coil long ways. Uh, the only other thing you can do to split a coil like that would be a 100,000 PSI of pressure. The only way it'll actually split, though, that's how powerful ice is when they do freeze. So just something to be aware of. It is a gas engine, so you got spark plug, air filter, fuel filter. Keep the fuel filters changed, you know, on uh, about every 100 hours also. And there is a schedule in the manual that is already here. Hopefully we got it. If not, I'll get you electronic versions and everything of it. Um, let me see here. On this control panel where the 110 volt plugs are, is a ground fault circuit interrupter, kind of like in your kitchen or shop where you can reset it. If you fire up the engine and these aren't lit, uh, you might just have to reset the breaker behind there. So just pull both plugs and then it's easy to reset. Traditionally, there's a red light will go on when it is tripped. So if you oh, go, that's a GFI plug in there? The GFI plug is on the backside All right. with a reset on there. So it's easy enough. 
uh, what we did with the light is we it's just more communication. If somebody called in, hey, my vacuum vacuum motor's not running, well, are the lights on? Yeah, lights are. Maybe it's a flow switch inside the tank, or the tank could be full. So the, the, it's a really good diagnostic tool for all of us. You do have a breaker here, so you have a 115 volt breaker for the burn for that generator. Uh, you have some on the burner itself. So typically on that, you got the engine driving the pump, the engine drives the generator at the same time. It is a fixed RPM, so it's going to run at 3,600 RPMs under no load. Under lo load, it's about uh, 3,250 to 3,450. Don't put a throttle cable on it, because if you have the engine running too slow, the, the generator is going to be off on voltage. You'll crawl downstream system. Does not hurt this engine. I've had these engines last 4,350 hours without an idle down. So it is set up the way it needs to be. I just had one shop guy do it one day and he goes, oh yeah, I fixed that throttle issue. And I'm like, what throttle issue? So typically on that, typically because of the electrical power and the burner is, is on there, you want to make sure if there's ever an issue, you check your voltage and the engine RPM. You want to make sure that voltage is in the 115, 120 volt range. If it's running slow or the engine seems to be off or, you know, bad spark plug or whatever, or another issue with a loose belt. If you end up having low voltage, uh, the problem is you'll actually probably see black smoke coming out of the burner. The black smoke could be at just engine related RPM. We just had that on another client. So basically you wanna make sure that you're 3600, no load, 3450, give or take, under load. And you could check your voltage through the uh, GFCI, Gunco Circuit Interrupter. You can also check it at the side by the burner. Um, we'll go to this side here and then I'll show you the other half side of the uh, power washer here. Typically we're running a, a high efficiency Beckett burner here. You, in order to get flame you need spark fuel and air like any other combustible engine but this is basically for the burner system. Typically, you're producing a, pretty much a little mini flamethrower into the burner chamber. Uh, you have the blower motor, the blower fan, you got a Lovejoy connection, and then it drives the fuel pump. So everything is being powered off that 115 volt going through the system. You got a uh, Raycor, store, Raycor style oil water separator and diesel fuel filter for that. These are about every 100 hours too, you'll change this. This is going into the diesel fire tank, diesel tank, which is white here. Uh, it's marked. So basically, you got your diesel tank. When needed, it only will kick on under the gun. I've had people start the engine and say, hey, the burner light doesn't come on, uh, no heat. It's meant to be that way, and I'll show you on the other side when we get there. You don't want runaway steam explosion. So if this thing would just start and a burner kept it kicked down without those controls, this would blow apart and take half the trailer with it. A steam explosion is pretty volatile. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Okay. So we have a lot of redundant safety devices to help prevent that. I just want to throw that at you. I do have a video of a stage steam explosion that will blow your mind and a little power washer. That's why we have the most redundant device. We have pressure switch, so no pressure at the gun, no heat. We have a flow switch that actually uh, regulates the, not regulates, but know that the flow is running through the heating coil, so if there's no flow, there's no heat. No pressure, no flow. We have high limit switch, which is adjustable thermostat, so if it's too hot, it's going to shut off the burner. We have that actually cutting off the fuel supply to the burner system, the thermostat. The other two shut off the spark, so we actually have redundant backup systems on there. And worst case scenario on the other side, there's a big hose bar looking fitting coming off the discharge part of the heating coil and that's a steam burst relief valve which will pop off at 8,000 pounds of steam and it has really nothing to do with the pump. It's steam pressure buildup. Wow. So all that stuff is designed with redundant safety devices. Don't jerry-rig it and bypass and do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's there for a reason. And like I said, we have the most safety devices on there so the safety wise you're in, a, you're in good hand in that category, especially with the steam burst relief as the, the fail safe in the system. So it isn't really 
as complicated, but it, every little hot water power washer you could have in South Bend could have the same issue happen. So this one's covering you in a big way. Um, but typically, you'd have a breaker here. This is your ignition box up here, your igniter. And we can go through any diagnostic issues over the phone or with you and information on how to test or run that. Um, authorized power wash centers, good to go on those too, so you should be in good hands that way. But like I said, I just wanted to show you, introduce you to the burner system. Uh, the heating coil is unique on this. We actually have a long, one of the longest pipes you can fit in here. We don't use pancake. It's a very high efficiency burner system. Um, some, um, some other system can burn four more gallons of diesel every hour of the day and cost a contractor or city an extra thousand or sixteen hundred bucks a month to run. This is by far the most fuel efficient one. It's about a gallon and a half an hour. It's a, it comes out the top of the machine on the other side. So the burner system has got the exhaust. There's a uh, double insulation blanket around there. So it's relatively cool to the touch except for where the burner comes out. Uh, that extra insulation also helps with the efficiency of it. Like a well insulated home with a high end furnace, you know, doesn't cost you much because of both factors. Uh, the other part here, which for your concern, I saw your face about the steam explosion and all that. So let me show you how everything's done here. We make it extremely nice in that category. Um, let me go in here. Typically, once again, designed by a mechanic. Typically on any pressure washer, you're going to have a pressure regulator because it's a positive displacement pump, so when the engine's running, the pump is pumping. You shut off a gun, if you don't have a way to, for that water to go, it'll, I hate to say it, but blow the head off the pump or do some other damage. So what we have is the, the best uh, regulator, it's a green spring unloader here. It's weighted to like 21 gallons a minute, 4,300 PSI, so it's way above what it should be operating at. So it's a real heavy duty valve. It's spring loaded so when water comes up and in there, we set that spring tension for the pressure rating. When the gun is off, the spring collapses and it opens up a port that allows it to be bypassed back to tank. It's hard to see, but it's on the opposite side of this plug. Is it actually a bypass hose? And that clear bypass hose is running under the trailer, under the machine, and back to the top of the water tank. So it actually will bypass back the tank. The benefit of that is any pressure washer that's left on the ground, you hook a garden hose, you start that little 13 horse on and you walk away for five minutes, you'll come back where you could actually have melted your, your pump valves and everything because anything under uh, pressure, like a hydraulic system gets hot, the same with a power wash pump. It could be a cold water pressure washer with 60 degree water in there. Five minutes later, it could be boiling inside the head. So you always want to, any operator, anybody, if you keep seeing the same problem over and over again with a power washer, is because of leaving it, the gun off. How we prevented that is running this bypass back to the supply tank so it's circulating with the fresh water. You're not going to get an overheat as long as you got water in the tank. So you're in good shape with our bypass. Another insurance policy that's put on here. The other devices, that's a pressure switch we've talked about, so no pressure, no heat. So pressure is right here. We have a square one of these in the bin for you in a bag. This is a flow switch, so it may monitors when the flow is running through the, the high pressure hose. So actually, cold water, high pressure cold water is coming off the pump, going into the valve in cold water high pressure. High pressure line, hose, cold water is coming into the heating coil, and the heating coil is actually under pressure. So it's running at the rated pressure, and every time the gun's off, it's rated for the bypass pressure too. So everything is being preheated under, that's the typical way almost every power washer out there is, a hot water unit. Now on the discharge side of the, um, on what we've done here, let me finish. There's a JIC fitting here. So say you needed to replace something on this cluster, you can break this free and now the whole thing is in your hands. You can get access to the pressure switch, you can get access to the flow switch. And the bottom here are the burst, uh, pressure relief valve or what they call a poppet valve. Pop so anything over 4,300 PSI, this will pop off, or 4,500 PSI. Uh, this is a little spring-loaded relief valve. That's primarily for the pump. 
So if the pump was to be overloaded or high pressure, somebody screwed around with the unloader, they're the safety device, so it'll protect her from getting overpressurized on the pump side. Once it enters the heating coil, it comes out this block here. It's going to be high temperature hot water coming out of here. In this case, we have a split between two high pressure hoses. One's going to this high pressure hose reel here. The other one is to those manifold zones way back in here. So basically, they're both live hoses when it comes to that. Typically, on this unit here, uh, we have a trigger gun and one attached to the high pressure line. And we also have a ball valve here. So this valve, if you weren't going to use the pressure line and you just want to isolate it and have it off, you typically can just ba basically turn this valve in the off position and you don't have this being live. One way or another you have to either shut the valve off or leave the gun on. If they started and it's just spraying water out the garden hose, uh, out the pressure hose, there will be no pressure. So basically, connect it to a gun or shut that valve off if you know you're just not going to use it. Oh, and here too, just to show you not to bounce around too much, but this chemical line, that's your chemical injector. So if parks and rack or you want to pre-soak down or or what you know, uh, wash on one of your uh, garbage trucks and brush and do a truck wash on them. You can inject soap in through here. Most little chemical injectors are about that big. This is so big because they really shouldn't work on nine gallon a minute, there's too much back pressure for it to have to actually relieve. With this is custom built, you can get soap out of this unit pretty, pretty well. So if you did need it to degrease a parking lot or if you got had a big festival in town and you want to pressure clean the sidewalks, common area, that's your downstream injector. Could also be put on back there. Primary is good to be left on that one, but they are quick disconnect, so you do have the option where you want to inject the soap from which reel. Because you do have that other high pressure hose reel there. And the one that is marked reel is where you would connect that to. So um, yes, the thing with that is it's a nine gallon a minute machine. So say you were running one gun, you would have a nine gallon nozzle on there, or a number nine. If two people want to run the machine, then you have to have two four and a half gallon nozzles. If you have a nine and a nine, then you're going to have pressure and no flow, you know, like too much, you know, it's going to, it's got to be dialed in based on the number nine. So two nozzles. Number nine. Like I have a concrete cleaner, 48 inch wide that we demoed last time when I first came out here. They have four nozzles on them, so it's kind of like four 2.5s, but you get close to nine, but it's all, everything is, you know, with that equation of nine. Um, on the power washer, just keep it easy, and we can redo this, go through it, make sure you run it, know how to do it. The supply tank is the one now that had the winterizing solution in there, the pink stuff. It's running through here. What we did, we have a valve here. So when a water tank is full and you pull open the, the screen filter to clean this filter, water will keep flushing and you can't get it back on because of the O-ring in here. That little O-ring will fly out. So by having the ability to shut this down, you're able to clean it up. You can see it's a little bit of algae on there. You just want to be able to rinse that off and keep that clean. I can do that right now. That's a little bit of the winterizing solution. So that's the RV solution that's in there. Uh, once that's all flushed out, you don't need it all winter long, or summer long, I mean. Is yeah, I mean it should be. I got I don't have the MSDS sheet with me. I mean if you got a wash bay you could flush it down a wash bay and just run it through there. Yeah. So the other thing just briefly to know is supply tank line is here. That's where this valve is positioned. When you wanna 
run the antifreeze through there in the winter and you, we can, we're doing a video about that too and how to winterize that, we'll get it to you. You just switch your valve. Huh? Now it'll suck from the winterizing tank into the pump, into the heating coil and out to the cleaning head and in through the reels and everything. So that's how you gotta do, flip this on. You'll start the engine, you wanna be quick. You, you turn on the, you know, the, uh, one head, then the other head, and then you shut them off, they're winterized. Once you get the winterizing solution in the head, you're good. And then run it throughout the system, and we'll get into that shortly. That's the uh, most complicated part of the whole system, to be honest with you. And it's not too, too bad once you see it in action. Um, and this is a gasoline tank. There is two carbon filter cartridges. You normally don't have to worry about them. I've never seen them that needed to be replaced yet. I may be wrong, but basically it's not. It's a non-issue on that. Uh, they are ratcheting type straps, so it is a EPA approved engine for anywhere in the country, including California. The other part right here, let me pull this up here. Hard to see, but the little hose bar fitting here, that's our burst steam diaphragm, a steam, steam relief valve or burst disc. It's a rupture disc, it's just like a piece of brass in there. When that blows off, it blows off, you normally have to just replace that. You have one in your kit. So if it does pop off, it could be because they're getting low on water and they're driving and then all of a sudden suck the little air with the burner on. That happens a lot when guys are cleaning miles of sidewalk where they got the 48 inch and they're walking, the trailer's moving. They get kind of a little low on water. They get a little steam explosion. If you change the valve out and your tank is full and you're ready to go back again, the blows again definitely have a red flag. It's got to come back in the shop to figure out what's causing the uh, overheating of the heating coil. But like I said, everything is designed to be already uh, pretty easy to operate it does it all on its own it's only when and if something does happen do you have uh, have to give us a call or take it to a service center and then that control panel is right there in the back that's where your GF uh, ground fault circuit interrupter is your two plugs so your power supply they're plugged in there power washer is kind of complete